low MX 3681. And um, just fixing my appearance, getting my composure together, wanting to present myself correctly here. Okay. So, uh, what I'm drinking here, I have a drink. What am I drinking? Is this beer? This year? It kind of has the appearance of beer because it's, it, it looks like it's something fermented. And it's, um, what it is, is fermented apple juice. It's called Pink Lady Kombucha, Pink Lady Apple Kombucha. And it's fermented apple juice. So, uh, you know, it has, it has bubbles as you can, you can see the bubbles. <clears throat> but, uh, okay, so what I'm trying to present here is that this is not juice, but it is juice, but it's fermented juice. And it's, it accumulated uh, less than, probably less than 2% alcohol. And yeah, I'd say, I just go with that. Less than 2% alcohol, maybe less than 1%. But it is known as kombucha. And kombucha is healthy. It, uh, it's healthy for your, your body. It's healthy for your, uh, your intestines. It's healthy for a lot of things. While it's not beer, it is sort of like that in some minimal way to express it but um has a lot of good ways about it that it makes you feel better somewhat kind of like beer but the way i'm living uh and where i'm living where i'm living the people i'm living with i can't be myself and i don't want to just say that but i have to say that because I'd rather be drinking beer sometimes. <clears throat> yes. Oh. Um, it's not my choice. See, let me explain this. You can see the background. What's my background? What's behind me? You know, whatever. See that old lamp? <clears throat> See that picture? That art picture there? And the lamp? It's all about what's in this house is a bunch of art. There's a lot of art pictures that, to me, they're up on the wall and they don't mean a damn thing. But they're there and they're special in this house that I'm living in. But to me, they really don't mean a damn thing. They don't mean a damn thing. But they're there, and the art's there, and that art is special to the people I'm living with. And to me, they're like meaningless, they're worthless, mostly. But my martial arts in the year 1995, you see, is expensive as hell. Because I was very much emulating this guy right here. Jean-Claude Van Damme and Jean-Claude Van Damme is like French and he's Belgium, Belgian. And this man is an artist. He's a martial artist. And he's not just a martial artist, he's a fighter. He's not just a fighter, he's a martial arts movie actor. And because he's an actor, he's a very prominent person, a very prominent human being. I'm so proud to wear his clothes I'm so proud to wear what he represents, Mr. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Not the block, the emblem. It's the symbolis, the symbolic meaning of Jean-Claude Van Damme is, uh, is representing his image, the JCVD. And you're not supposed to just say, I just recently uh, learned you're not supposed to say Jean-Claude Van Damme. You're supposed to just say, JCVD because most people don't know how to say 
Jean-Claude Van Damme. If you can't say Jean-Claude Van Damme correctly, they'd rather you have, you know, have you say JCBD. Because it's not easy to just say the, the prominence and express who this person really is. Now, that's why, you know, I'm, I'm quoting that because uh, it's important for people to understand who Jean-Claude, who, well, who uh, JCBD is. And let me correct myself even because I, when we see him on TV, we think of him as like family. And the reason I'm saying that is because he's a very popular, iconic actor in the 80s. And I think like people think of him as like, yeah, I know that guy. Well, you, if you can see him on TV, it doesn't mean you know him. And if you can see him, you know, in around like a let's say people see me, they know me from Retro Rizuki 81. Well, they see me, they they know me. That doesn't necessarily mean they actually know me. They know me literally. They know of me, but they don't actually know me. There's a big difference there. It's important to quote it and let people know, understand, the better word not to know, but before you know something, you have to really understand it up here in the mind. In the, you know, your, your, your mind has to understand something before you know what you're, what I'm talking about and what, what the, what it is to understand. You have to know it and understand it first. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, I've expressed this now. Um, I want to get on further into my video and I don't think I want to go over 15 minutes. It's at seven and a half minutes right now, approximately. I'm going to try to get this under 15 or 20 minutes. We'll, we'll see how far it goes. Um, okay. Now, uh, I'm itching my nose. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, you can see I'm at home. Uh, I'm, not the most, I'm not the most professional broadcaster, really. I don't think I am. If I have an itch in my nose, you're not supposed to scratch it. You know, you're not supposed to do these things. Well, it takes skill to broadcast and it takes talent. It takes skill to, um, it takes know-how, know-how. And if you know how to do something, you're going to do it right. And when you want to do it right, you better do it right. So you do it yourself the best you can. Now I need to have money, money to have a healthy lifestyle. And if I have a healthy lifestyle, I'm a true martial artist. You see, if I want to be the true martial artist, I'm going to have to have a healthy lifestyle. It's like the three D's. What are the three D's that they say? Dedication, desire, or how does it, it doesn't go out, go say dedication first. First they say desire. They say dedication, or is it devotion? See, it's like the same thing. I kind of forgot what the three D's are, but I know they're, okay, so it's, it's probably this. Desire, discipline, dedication or devotion depending on how you want to express it and say it yes so uh when you understand the three d's that's like what coaches will say for sports the three d's you know and when they say that they they mean it in a good way right well it's like that with martial arts too Martial arts is a positive thing. It's not about, oh, I can fight. Look how tough I am. Look how cool I am and how tough I am. Urgh. No, it's nothing to do with being better. Initially, it's not nothing to do with being better. It's not supposed to be nothing to do with being better, in my personal opinion. Um, see, martial arts is about being, uh, being truthful. Being real with yourself. 
And if you're real with yourself, if you're true to yourself, you're going to be true to other people. That means you're going to have something called integrity. And when you show that you have integrity, that means you have respect for yourself and, and res you know, pointing at the damn there. <laughs> dom, dom, okay. The damn, they don't say damn, they say damn, dom, damn, damn, or dom, I don't know how, but I'm not going to get into French right now, really, but see, when you speak of yourself, you're supposed to, you know, like when I'm talking about myself, I'm pointing to, to this, to, to, to Jean-Claude Van Damme's name, but it's, see, in my mind, I'm remembering the way I used to be one year of my life, and it probably was not just one year. Actually, it was kind of like two, maybe three years, but more towards this the last year that I started training this martial arts because I started to get a body developing like this guy. But what happened more, see, when I was going through puberty at a younger age of uh, 13 and 14 years of age, what happened is uh, my voice changed. My legs got stronger, thicker. My my glutes, my my butt got thick. My my ab, my abs were forming. I don't have them right now, formed abs, but I had abdominal muscles literally forming, like you know, um, like a man, like a military guy. And I had that. I had big biceps, big strong. You know, like this this arm was really really strong. And it's not you know it's like. My arm, my forearms, I used to have a lot of definition in my forearms. I don't necessarily have that so much right now. But I do have the memories in my mind when, uh, see, let me explain this. In 1995, uh, when I started training the martial arts karate, I literally had the body of, like, it was like an emulation, like, very much like uh, like Jean-Claude Van Damme. Um, literally a lot of my features were like Mr. Van Damme. And um, I was supposed to say JCVD. See, I've, I've even got that bad habit myself, I would say. And I've got to correct myself sometimes, I'm thinking. Because I'm not used to the new, uh, the new iconic image of this JCVD. So uh, tell me what I'm wrong if I say Jean-Claude Van Damme. You're supposed to say it right, Jean-Claude Van Damme, if you can say it right. But they'd rather people just say in respect, you know, like in terms of respecting him and his image, just JCVD. Because it's, you know, I don't know, for whatever reasons, I think, I think it's proper to say that. Because this is the iconic uh, martial arts sensation, the image, what represents a lot. It's expensive, this, the, the image, the icon, JCVD. Yes, and uh, so I respect JCBD. He's got an he has an empire, and he's a great, cool guy. Uh, now you know, uh, even though you know, let me say this too: um, some martial arts movie actors may have uh, some differences, disagreements with other martial arts movie actors. Uh, you know, I don't want to just get into it and speak of it, but there's some people that are fans of different martial artists. Now, you know, that's all from the 80s and that. Now, I know sometimes people in Hollywood, they may not get along or understand each other, but that's not something I want to just bring up because I'm also thinking of uh, of Steven Seagal. And yes, I'm, a, I'm actually a fan of Steven Seagal too, but I don't... Uh, don't want to make this broadcast about, you know, Steven Seagal, even though I do know he's from, uh, before he went to Hollywood, before he opened his own dojo in Japan, he's been from, uh, he's been from, uh, what is the state? Oh, city. I'm thinking of city too. Lansing, Michigan. That's where I'm from too. I'm from Detroit, mostly Wayne County region of Detroit, Michigan, Wayne County, Michigan, you know. Kind of like the same, same kind of culture, mostly. Wayne County has all the different ways about it. That is, to me, Wayne County is different than like if you get on, get near Chicago by, uh, like South Haven or 
all those cities, uh, Sagatok, South Haven. I might go there from time to time, but I'm not really wanting to focus on that. Um, and then we also have Taylor Lautner, who's from uh, Hudsonville, Michigan. And they actually make a ice cream. It's called Hudsonville ice cream. And it comes from Hudsonville, Michigan. It's a popular ice cream from Michigan. Okay. Now, you know, for me to get this body these days, I have to, uh, I have to really, you know, like, it's not just going to happen. And let me explain that. For me to get this iconic martial arts sensation back, I don't think it would just happen so easily. And especially, you you know, because of the way I'm, I have to live without the money that I earned, without the money that I clearly earned. And it's not just having like a lump sum of money from my martial arts degree. Uh, I had this special degree. And I, I knew it was special at the time when I received it at the ceremony in 1995. I knew it was special because of the way my karate teacher presented it in a ceremony before the class. And he gave it to me. And he gave me two or three copies of this degree. It's been 28 years since I received it. Um, and, you know, I had it on me. I had it in my possession. And I live in a house, I live in a home where I'm not allowed to have a safe. In my youth, I'm not allowed to have a safe, and, and, and that's that's not a good thing because I was not allowed, permitted to have a safe by my own parents. Uh, I mean, I think as family, you're supposed to trust your kids, you're supposed to trust family, trust family. But I don't live like that. My parents come from Detroit, and they're old school, and I don't like to speak of them, but I have a different life setting, a different culture that I, I believe differently, actually, than the than a standard conservative Republican, uh, you know, like it gets into more to, into that. But I, I might have some conservative values, but um, you could maybe call me like, uh, maybe I kind of am somewhat, somewhat simulating kind of like, a, uh, I'm not really, I'm a rhino or what, what am I? That's what, that means Republican name only, or like Geraldo Rivera maybe. See, because I don't really want to claim just anything like that, but so that's why I'm trying to say this. I have my views and my values, but oh, I have to become something too. Now, let me explain this. I had a martial arts degree, and it's supposed to have um, it's supposed to have trademarks too. I remember it's supposed to have trademarks, copyrights. And royalties and I forgot all that I forgot all the things it has but it's that's not all it has it has way more than my teacher was trying to give me at the time now because I'm doing the moves for Shenmue and I'm doing the moves for Tekken's Jin Kazama and Tekken um, I was inspired also by this guy Jean-Claude okay don't say it I stop myself JCVD inspired me and that's why I feel like I, you know, I feel I feel inspired, but I don't just feel inspired. It's because I felt power and talent. At that time, I felt a lot of talent, a lot of power. My body went through changes, hormonal changes. I used to drink four glasses to eight glasses of milk a day. And I used to drink Gatorade and I used to work out in my basement all the time at another house in Melvindale, Michigan. Technically, that's the city it was. And, and uh, you know, people didn't understand me that year. Kids didn't understand me. And when I say kids, I mean middle school, junior high students did not understand me. I was actually the age where I was supposed to be a freshman in high school. I was in eighth grade in 1995. You notice how they talk about warehouse number eight? To me, that's like, uh, that's like the changing room. And I talked to this teacher. He looks just like Guizong. And we had our 
discussions in that room. And I gave him actually ideas. I wanted him, I wanted there, I said, use my fight choreography and emulate it, use it to make a video game. And when one day I want that proof, that evidence to be used to help me to become a martial arts movie actor because I want to be like this guy, JCVD. And uh, that's why I represented, uh, that's why I'm representing my Karate Federation also, the United States Subak Do Muno Kwan Federation. And it's not just why I'm representing that, but I'm representing that, I'm representing the Shenmue fight choreography. They don't talk about that at all in the group for Shenmue. But this guy here, Jean-Claude, JCVD, JCVD, I have to stop myself as a habit. You know, uh, JCVD, he's in Mortal Kombat 1, the video game. And that's special. That's really cool. He's in Mortal Kombat 1, the video game. The iconic sensation of JCVD is in Mortal Kombat 1. I remember that movie came out, Mortal Kombat, the first Mortal Kombat movie in 1995 also. If you don't know it, do your research. Also, the first Street Fighter movie as Gaio. I'm a fan of Gaio also, was starring JCVD. And there's a lot of things about the martial arts. There's a lot of aspects. I wanna say things. Things is like elementary toddler, toddler talk. Things, things. Uh, factors, no, that's not the one. Factors. Surprise, no. See, I've got this old terminology from other people that taught me martial arts too, like maybe ninjutsu, and they they use you know certain words in uh, teaching lecture, you know, in class. But I'm going to use my own. Certain aspects of the martial arts are uh, correlating, relating to like video games because martial arts is in video games too. And I'm talking about the fight choreography. And when you have the fight choreography in the video games and they're also related to these movies, you see, the way they made Tekken, okay, they used my fight choreography that I used in class. Like, well, it's not all my fight choreography. I wanna explain that also. Their moves from Bloodsport, like a spinning sidekick, turning sidekick, you spin and you do a, like a middle sidekick, that's from Bloodsport. When J JCVD is fighting Chun Li in a final round, look for after after Chun Li throws sand in his eyes, look for JCVD to do the spinning sidekick on him. And when you see JCVD doing a spin sidekick on Chun Li, guess what? That's how they made Tekken. That's how they made Jin Kazama. And Jin Kazama is also copied from my face, my looks. If I had a hoodie on, you could see the tell. I'm Jin Kazama. That's no lie. Looking at the clock there, I'm distracted. I feel like I'm in karate class long ago. They used to have this clock up on the wall, this round, round, big clock, big round clock on the wall in, in Region 5 in a military campground. This is a big clock there. Now there's a camera there, it looks like. Looks like a privacy, privacy kind of security camera there nowadays, if that's what it is. Okay, so I'm at 20, almost 25 minutes, 25 minutes now. And uh, trying to keep this video simplified as possible, which is hard to do sometimes. It's the same thing way with, it's the same way with class. When I had class in 1995, it was hard to do that. I'll be right back.
sometimes I don't like wearing this jacket. Even this, you know, I don't just like to wear the shimmer jacket. And what I represent, the reason I have a white border is because I had a white belt that year. And I don't just like representing, you know, the, this, all this here. This is military, everybody. This is military. Now, you know, I don't just like the weirdest, but I do wear it sometimes. And the reason I wear it sometimes is because I was good enough in the martial arts and spiritual enough. And actually I was too spiritual. So at the time I didn't accept this gift. Um, I was kind of, you know, a little too spiritual, a little, uh, somewhat not, you know, you know, when you're spiritual, you don't live in reality sometimes. And when you're not in reality at times, you know, you're, you know, when you're in that meditative state, you're not thinking right sometimes because you're being spiritual. And if you're being too spiritual, like I did something that's, you know, out of whack. I didn't, I didn't accept my teacher's gift. But I didn't really understand what I was doing because I'm so spiritual in the martial arts, especially. And just everything was about training, training, training. And um, I didn't really know better. You notice how, uh, well, let me show you this. Let me give you a really good example of what Shem was like. Ryu Hazuki, you know what Ryu Hazuki does before he crosses the street? He doesn't wait for the chicken to cross the street. But what he does, he looks both ways. He has a back when he's doing it too. Might have been this left one. I mean, it's, it's either the left one or the right hand. He's, he's looking both ways. He looks both ways. He walks. He walks across the street. But what does he do first? He looks both ways. Because why? Who taught him that? See? They don't just tell you these things. But that's what I'm saying. When you're so honorable, you're so, you have so much integrity, you have to really, um, you've got to do everything so perfect. And let me say this. Even if you do everything that perfect, you may not, you still may not have the right outcome you want in your life because nobody can just have guarantee that they're going to have the certain outcome that they're trying to re, uh, receive. Lest you know how, you know how, if you have a know how and you're well informed of, of, uh, of everything that's, that's, that's taking place in your life, you have to be very well informed. You have to have your parents on board in the martial arts. You have to have your family on board. You have to have your instructors on board. Everybody has to think, hey, that guy's special. He's going to be a martial arts movie actor one day. And there won't be all these, you know, confusions in life. There won't be so many complications and hurdles. Because what do you have? Everybody's on board and agrees. That's how people get straight A's in class. I always wonder how my karate teacher had straight A's. He's a valedictorian student because this is how they did it. I read it in a book in uh, like, a, what is it? The book club, scholastic, scholastic or something, some kind of, some kind of book club that I had in elementary school. I bought a book. I don't know if I still have it. It's, it tells you how to get straight A's. Yeah, and literally in school. And it was like an elementary. I, I bought this book from a book club. And, you know, I don't have the kind of family supporting me the right way. I don't have the kind of parents supporting me that way to... It's like a... How to explain it? Politically correct is to drink beer sometimes. And if you don't drink beer, if you don't drink certain liquor drinks, 
you're not on board more or less you're probably not on board with the way things are if you don't drink sometimes you're not on board you see politics is the education system the education system is the government you see so that's why they have a separation between church and state. That's why they have that. Because there's all kind of religions in America and around the world. Around the world. And with all these religions in America and the world, they have to separate church and state. And if they don't, they're going to have problems with people. They're not going to like someone. Drink, drink. You have to drink. And there's less than 2% of liquor, alcohol in this drink. Well, you're supposed to be responsible. Drink no more than one or two, two beers a day. Or you go out and drive. Don't drink and drive. You see? That's the best I can do there. Because I already explained it in the video. That's why. See, this is why. Um, and how to really express this. This is why martial art movie actors become successful, usually, generally speaking, at a younger age. And that's, let me say this too. It's not that I'm pointing the finger. Like, Ryuzuki does point the finger. I'm not pointing the finger directly at any one person, any two people or parties. I'm just saying... I'm stating the obvious and you know, yeah, it has to be told because that's what it takes. I would have loved that straight A's in school. I always wondered how my karate teacher, the first one I had was a straight A valedictorian. And then I had another one that I recently had. He's a salutatorian. But it works like that. Pretty much, if you want to be a, a martial arts movie actor, it works like that, too. I didn't know. I didn't know. And now that I know, and now I know. And this is Victor Rizuki, 81.